welcome to Christ Church. Thank you so much for joining us for our morning prayer service on the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, July the 26th. We will begin with our opening hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded, found in your bulletin. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open your lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
let us join together in the jubilate found in your bulletin. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 128. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. Our service continues with the lessons. The first lesson is a reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is a reading from Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I find that it is always helpful to put current travails in a kind of historical context. And uh, this illustration is a doozy, and I'm not sure it fits perfectly, but it's so interesting, I'm going to try to make it fit. And it's what happened in 1875, the largest recorded swarm of locusts in American history descended upon the Great Plains. It was 1,800 miles long, this swarm of locusts, and it was 110 miles wide, and it stretched from Canada down to Texas. Um, and this is from the Writer's Almanac. Farmers just east of the Rockies began to see a cloud approaching from the west. It was glinting around the edges where the locust wings caught the light of the sun. People said the locusts descending descended like a driving snow in winter. They covered everything in their path. They sounded like thunder or a train and blanketed the ground nearly a foot deep. Trees bent over with the weight of them. They ate nearly every living piece of vegetation in their path. They ate harnesses off horses and the bark off trees. They ate curtains, clothing that was hung out on laundry lines. They chewed on the handles of farm tools and fence posts and railings. Some farmers tried to scare away the locusts by running into the swarm, and they had their clothes eaten right off their bodies. <laughs> people then were surely wondering what people today are wondering about our difficulties. What good can come out of such an awful situation? And at least some of the people then uh, were also like some of the people today. They turned to their Bibles uh, for help and for comfort. And today, uh, Amanda read one of the most towering promises that we have in all of Scripture. It's a famous one. It's a, like a refrigerator magnet one for good reason. And it's Romans 8, 28. Paul says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Now, I pray uh, for you uh, today that this piece of extraordinary 
Christian hope uh, will lodge deeply into your heart. So in this short sermon, I want to look at what uh, Paul is saying here. Two words of that promise for me are especially uh, powerful. So, and it, those words make it more powerful than the ever popular, everything happens for a reason. You hear that a lot. And those words are all and good, all and good. And I don't mean the other bandied about saying it's all good because obviously it is not all good. Uh, there is plenty of bad in the world. There is plenty of bad in our lives. And there's plenty of bad in us, in our hearts. It's not all good. But Paul promises that all things, that means all things, no exceptions, and even and maybe especially the bad things in our lives will be used by God for good. All things will work together for our good. That's the promise. Nothing is excluded. Now, it may be true that everything happens for a reason, but isn't it also true that the reasons are almost always hidden from us. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've asked, as I have over and over, why something happened, what was the reason for it, why, it's, why it did happen, why it is happening to you. You can see no rhyme or reason, and certainly you can't identify anything immediately as good. I've been reading um, British murder mysteries this summer, and it's a good way to enter into a world that is far, far away from coronavirus. And especially in Agatha Christie, the, the violence is downplayed and the sense of intrigue is uh, very high. It's front and center. And of course, once you've started a murder mystery, uh, well, you can't not finish the book. Um, you've got to see, uh, you've got to read to the end to see who done it. And that is also true with our own lives. Um, at the end, all will be revealed. I've heard it said that right now our lives are like the bottom of an oriental rug. Um, if you have one uh, at home where you're watching, lift it up and look at the bottom. You can dimly... Uh, in the right light, make out the patterns and the colors, but they're muted and you can't really make them out as they are. Only when you turn the rug over, right, do you see how that muted design becomes rich with color and intricate handiwork. Such will be the vantage point of our lives in heaven. As Paul says elsewhere, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Civil rights uh, leader John Lewis, uh, whom we lost this past week, um, reached the end of his earthly life this past week. And he tells a remarkable story in his memoir of how all things work together for good in the end. In 1961, he participated in a Freedom Rider march in South Carolina, and he was viciously attacked by a Klansman. Now, when the police officer arrived, Lewis refused to press charges against his attacker. And he said this to the police officer at the time in front of the Klansman. We're not here to cause trouble. We're here so that people will love each other. 48 years later, <laughs> the Klansman, who was by then a former Klansman, sought out John Lewis 
came to him and asked for his forgiveness for that brutal act, which Lewis immediately granted. And in asking for forgiveness, the man restated almost verbatim what Lewis had said to the officer, we're here so that people will love each other. Nearly half a century after this attack, the Oriental rug was turned over for both men. We know that all things work together for good. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So when you feel like in your life the swarm of locusts has descended upon everything around you, it is deeply comforting to remember that all things work together for good. Now, this is not a disembodied, pie-in-the-sky uh, example of like positive thinking. Not at all. There's a reason Paul can say that. The reason Paul can say this is because he understood the power of the day we now call Good Friday. Our arrest, our trumped-up trial, our torture and brutal murder of the Son of God is the very definition of bad. It does not get more bad than that deicide. And it turns out that at the end of that story, Jesus, innocent of all sin, was the one who was murdered. And yet, as T.S. Eliot says in his poem, East Coker, in spite of all that, we call this Friday good. Why? Why? We call this Friday good because on the cross, our sins were forgiven forever. We call this Friday good because all the bad that has ever happened or will ever happen to us and in us was absorbed by Christ on the cross. And we call this Friday good because on the third day, Christ was risen from the dead. We call this Friday good because he trampled down death, giving us life everlasting, where we too, in Christ, shall be revealed in glory. All things work together for good. Amen. Please let us join together as we affirm our faith, reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The service continues with our parish prayers. In these prayers of the people, please respond to the words, Lord, in your mercy, with hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise that all things work together for good, even when it doesn't necessarily feel that way. Give us hope that while now we see dimly, one day all will be revealed in your love. Let this truth bring us perseverance and deep peace in light of our crucified Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, at a time when everything ahead of us feels unknown, ground us in the gospel. Remind us, God, of your unfailing love for all of us that you have made. Inspire compassion in us by your Holy Spirit and bind the hearts of our families, cities, nation, and world together in love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Charlottesville, Virginia, our home. For parents of young children, we pray for guidance and rest and moments of joy. For those who live alone, we pray for friendship and community of some kind during this time. For teachers, nurses, doctors, grocery store clerks, mail carriers, bus drivers, and all other essential workers, we ask for your protection. For any who are homeless or who have difficult home lives, we pray for mercy and safety. Show us, Lord, what it means to be a good neighbor and lead us in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for every person suffering with COVID-19, their loved ones, and all who are afraid. Where there is anxiety, Calm our racing minds and swirling thoughts of all that is unknown with your peace that surpasses all understanding. By the hands of the doctors and scientists working every day, eradicate this virus, God. And in the meantime, we ask for your hope and peace to carry us in each step ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Let's join together in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us for our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision, found in your bulletin. the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us next Sunday for church.